Jessalyn, you alluded to this earlier, but I want to sort of revisit this is this whole idea of a backup plan. You know, it, it was only after you talked about it that it struck me how important that was. Um, so basically one of the really bad winters, I think, or blizzards, I think it was right around New Year's um, there before we pulled the cows from the study. Got a terrible blizzard. I actually had driven the tractor to the house that I stay in just to be able to get back over to the research center. I had to plow my way out with the tractor. Um, <laughs> so plowed my way over to the, the cows and the cows were gone. They were not in any of the bale grazing paddocks that we had set up. They had made their way over to a little bit, a tiny little bit of brush because a lot of the windbreaks had gotten blown over. The bales were completely covered with snow. The waters were completely covered with snow. The fences were completely covered with snow. So a lot of the cows had found a little brush patch about a half mile away in another pasture, and that's where we found quite a few of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the snow was so deep that you couldn't really get through with a tractor, um, maybe with a horse, but not easy. So we were on foot for a lot of it, trying to round up these cows um, after the blizzard had finally settled. And we, we, you know, it was it was a wreck. There's definitely some cows that were probably not found. Um, and pretty much all the cows got trailed home to the dry lot or to, you know, a closed pasture that we could push up snow and feed hay. So kind of a lesson learned. <laughs> Basically, if you're going to set up a bale grazing, I always think either set it up close to home or close to an area that you would generally winter feed where you would have, you know, hay stocked up in piles that you can easy get to with the tractor and roll out and feed if you need to in an emergency. Um, winter water is always an issue up here, but, you know, just have a good backup plan for that winter water never freezes and we can always get it open and get snow pushed around it so the cows can get to that water tank. For a lot of producers that are going to first try bill raising, I definitely would recommend just doing it close to home where it's an easy, you know, less than a half mile trail to home if you have to get them home and feed where you would normally feed, just in case. Um, we get a crazy winter like that again, but you never know what can happen. And when your water's frozen, you know, you're not thinking about all you're thinking about is how you're going to get water out there. And if they're four miles from home, it's not like it's an easy little trail home um, or, or trailering cows home during the winter. Yeah, so definitely um, lesson learned there. And I know there was quite a few other producers around North Dakota that graze cover crops, you know, all winter long. And they <clears throat> had to pull cows off of their study, or not their study, their their cover crop fields, and bring them home and feed hay. And yeah, just just being aware that it's definitely a realistic thing that can happen, that it doesn't work. Um, and then, you know, we were kind of in the situation where those bills were then covered all winter long. So the rest of the, you know, I think we had like four or five more moves in our in our study probably well over 500 bales that didn't get fed just sat out there because we would have literally had to push snow to get every bale and then try to get them hauled home and right yeah. so that so, wouldn't have made sense yeah no. no so um but i mean it was an atypical winter you know we definitely don't usually get that terrible winters usually it's the opposite anymore where we get pretty mild winters and a lot less snow so but, uh, yeah. le lesson learned make sure you have a contingency plan for that. 